right, so today it's day three of 15 days of foundation. This is where I try out a new foundation every single day for 15 days. We're kind of switching off between drugstore and high end, or I'm trying to, so we have about equal amounts. So yesterday we did a L'Oreal foundation. If you guys missed that video, you'll definitely want to go watch it. It was a good one. But today we're going to be trying out a new release by Natasha Denona. This is the Face Glow Foundation. I have tried one of her other foundations. I'll leave a link down below to that review, which I was not a fan of. But this one sounds like it's more kind of up my alley for what I usually go for. It says it's a best-selling, I love when new releases say best-selling, best-selling lightweight foundation with SPF 15 that offers brilliant staying powder and looks flawless from day to night. It's a hydrating foundation suitable for all skin types, natural looking finish, glowy, dewy effect, smooths, and well hydrated look. Medium coverage that's supposed to give you a glowy look without looking greasy and that isn't supposed to crease. So basically medium coverage, dewy, glowy. This foundation retails for $42. You get one fluid ounce of product and it comes in 12 shades, so not a great shade range. And the actual shades they have are kind of like weird undertones. There's a lot of them that say orange undertones. And then the shade I have, which is the lightest one, 10 neutral porcelain, says ultra fair for all undertones. So yeah, obviously shade range could use some major work with only 12 shades. I'm gonna start swatches right here so we can see what the lightest shade 10 looks like compared to some of my other foundations and I'll also swatch them compared to day one and day two, just so you can see. All right, so swatches. I don't have the other Natasha Denona foundation to swatch next to this one because I'm pretty sure I returned it because it was so horrible. But here's the Natasha Denona Face Glow in the shade 10. This is the L'Oreal foundation we reviewed yesterday in day two. This is the shade 400. 415 Dior foundation from day one in 0N, Estee Lauder Dubwear 1C0, NARS Natural Radiant in Mont Blanc, Dermacol 208, CYO Life Proof in 101, and L'Oreal True Match in W1. 15 Days of Foundation is also a charity campaign, so we're trying to raise $25,000. There's a link down below where you can support. You can also vote one time a day for the shelter that you want to win $10,000 if you have no idea what I'm talking about. Check out the announcement video. I'll link it in the eye and down below in every single 15 Days of Foundation video this series. In every single video at the top of the description box, I'm gonna put our current running total while we're at and how far we have to go to get to $25,000. If you're excited for day three and you enjoy this series, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. If you're new here, you can join the Bay Rito family and subscribe. I'm uploading every single day, 6 p.m. Pacific time for 15 days. All right, it's now 10.08. We're getting a little bit of a later start to start filming today. The packaging of this to me looks exactly like a liquid illuminator or something. It doesn't really look like foundation packaging, something about it. I don't know. Oh, wow. Super liquidy. I'm going to give this a really good shake because this is sounding like pure water. Way better. So definitely shake this if you get it. Squeeze tube and a pump and a crappy pump. I'm gonna start out with about that much. So I've already prepped my skin. Let's start out with the brush on this side. It smells like baby powder. Oh, it's feeling a lot more like thick and creamy than I was expecting with that initial liquidiness. It's actually pretty thick. I think I just got too much. I'm gonna kind of spread that over because I just got too much of that. It's very thick. It feels moisturizing, but it definitely is more of like a thick cream kind of consistency. I'm just gonna smooth over my forehead with the sponge. It's looking pretty good. This is supposed to be medium coverage, and I think it's medium coverage, but on the medium coverage scale, I would say it's lower medium coverage. There's something happening like right there, but I'm gonna go over and smooth that over after. But first let's do a sponge on this side and see how it goes. This is reminding me of something. Okay, so I'm getting barely a little bit better coverage on the brush side, but I would say the sponge side, the finish looks a lot better. I'm gonna try and just build this up a tiny bit and see if I can cover up my cheek area a little bit more. I think I like the sponge side better. I don't know, this one I have a, it's not like wowing me. It doesn't look bad. There's just something about it that I'm not loving. Doesn't look great around my pore area. It looks pretty heavy around there. Okay, I wouldn't say this one is buildable. I just added a tiny bit on here and I don't think I got a whole lot more coverage. Overall right now it looks good. Just the way this is sitting on my skin, I have a feeling 
it's gonna look pretty heavy throughout the day. The shade looks pretty good. I think the undertone might be slightly off, like maybe just a tiny bit pink, but it's wearable. So I just got this concealer in the mail and I cannot wait to try this. I'm gonna try this out today too, but this is the Makeup Forever Ultra HD Self Setting Concealer. This is in the shade 12. There is a lighter shade 10, which looks super fair, so that's exciting. I think I'm gonna be the shade 12. I'm not gonna like, you know, do a huge triangle or anything. I'm just gonna bring it right underneath my eye so it won't affect the foundation. Oh, this looks pretty yellow. Maybe it will be the other shade. So it says it's supposed to be self-setting. Should we test that and not do a powder today? I don't know. See how this blends out. I think I might be the lighter shade or maybe like a mix of the two. I'm gonna add a tiny bit more. This would be like a natural shade for me when I'm not wearing any other makeup and I just want like a little bit of coverage under there. But if I want some more brightness, I think I would be the other shade. This concealer has been on for probably about a minute now, so I'm gonna touch it. Still feels pretty tacky. I'm gonna give that a few minutes to see if it dries down and I don't need to set it, but I'm gonna go do the rest of my makeup and then I'll report back. I don't know what it is with this one, you guys. It doesn't look bad, that's the thing. Like if I was just looking at my face, I just feel like as far as glowy medium coverage, I have foundations that look a lot smoother on my skin, so maybe that's it. It is 1020, so that's when we're gonna call the check-in time. To the touch, it feels tacky. Like I am gonna have to set just this part of my face with powder. I might set my temples too, just so I can blend stuff. But yeah, it does feel tacky. It feels like a thicker, BB cream almost. It feels nice and moisturizing, but I can feel it. Like I definitely feel like I have makeup on. So 10.20 check-in, I'm gonna do the rest of my makeup and I'll be right back. It is now 10.50, but the check-in time again is 10.20. Did a little blend switch. So the more it's sitting on my skin, it's kind of grown on me. And I looked out in natural lighting, which you guys will see in a second, and it looked almost more just like a soft kind of glow. I do notice the one thing I really am not liking is that it is making my pores look massive and I also, I don't think I had these little bumps when I started applying it this morning unless I'm breaking out from hopefully not yesterday's foundation because I freaking love that one. But I'm thinking it might have been the Dior one from day one or I just am like having a weird reaction with this foundation. I'll show you guys really close in natural lighting but I have these like little under the skin bumps kind of like all over my skin right now and I don't remember seeing that when I was applying it so I'm hoping I'm not having like a weird reaction to this product. We'll see how it goes. I'm still going to try and keep it on and we'll see throughout the day if it gets worse or anything. So on the rest of my face for bronzer I used the Makeup Revolution Bronzing Glow Duo. Didn't use the highlight but I just went in with this bronzer shade. For blush I forgot how much I love this blush. NARS Free Soul. This used to be one of my favorites and I just kind of went in my favorites drawer and picked out a couple things to try again because I haven't reached for this in forever and this blush is so pretty if you like a glowy light pink blush. Then I also use this highlighter which is also one of my favorites that I haven't used in a while, the Jcap Pearl Luminizer. This is so gorgeous if you're someone who likes a light pink natural but still like beaming kind of highlighter that you can really build up. This one just sits on the skin so nicely and like doesn't emphasize your texture and this is a few bucks and I'm literally never gonna go through this entire highlighter in my life. For eyeshadow I tried out this NARS palette, Ignited. I also added in some of the Mac Patrick Star eyeshadows. I went in with these two shades right here, kind of deepen it up and also make it a little bit more cool toned. This palette was Okay, you definitely have to use these shades wet. Spray your blush with MAC Fix Plus or else they're just gonna be more of like toppers. The mattes were good, I don't know. I just don't feel like this one is quite worth the money. And then for lips, I layered Sigma Anti-Venom Liquid Lipstick with the MAC Patrick Star Peter, Peachy Peter. I love this nude lipstick. I've been using this shade a lot. So let's go see what this looks like in natural lighting and we'll do a flash test. All right, we're in natural lighting. I don't know what's happening with my bun today. So I'm just gonna zoom you in so you can see all the bumps and stuff I'm talking about. Okay. I think that is picking up. So you can just see bumps around here on this side too. And then right here, there's like three. And it's making my pores look friggin' massive. Here's my forehead. It doesn't look bad on my forehead. Again, I just feel like there's a little something happening right here. But overall, it doesn't look bad except for the bumps in around my pore area. So I'm just gonna see if those bumps get worse throughout the day. Like I said, I don't think I had those when I started applying, so we shall see. Let's do a flash test. You guys, the amount of times I take these flash photos with no flash and have to redo them is uh, pretty much every day. I pulled down my collar so you guys can kind of see my neck with the flash. It actually looks 
I think it looks really good in flash. I think it looks like it's just like the same shade as my neck, so that's exciting. Looks like this one you could definitely wear in flash photography. It does have SPF, but it doesn't seem to be like causing a major bounce back. Oh, also the concealer, a little update. So I did have to set my under eyes. Also, I had to set this part of my face. I forgot to say that. I did set my under eyes. It didn't self-set any more than other concealers I have, and I do feel like I'm getting a little bit more creasing than usual. So I'm gonna keep trying that Makeup Forever concealer, but right now I wouldn't say it's like self-setting and amazing or anything, but I'll keep trying it. Dragon Time 1020, I'll see you guys in a few hours in natural lighting again. Okay, it's now 3.46, so it's been on for over five hours. Another hair change. So it's looking almost a little bit better. I feel like since my skin has kind of like warmed up to it, it doesn't seem to be worse like on my forehead and it almost looks a little bit dewier, which I like. I'm not creasing too bad on my upper lip at all. I still don't love how it looks around my nose and my pores. That's like my main thing with this foundation. In order to wanna to wear this foundation again, I would definitely need to find a good primer combo with this one. I'm gonna try it with the Revlon Pore Filling. I always do a wrap up video at the end of 15 days of foundation updating you on when I try it in different ways and with different primers and setting sprays and everything. So I will try this one with different primers to see. Everywhere else it's looking pretty good, but here it is zoomed in. So yeah, I feel like everywhere except my pore area looks pretty good. I finally organized the entire filming room. You guys will have already seen that in a vlog by the time this video goes up. So now I'm just gonna get some work done and then I have a couple friends coming over later for dinner and then I'll see you guys at the end of the night. Okay, I was just so close to getting in the shower. I don't even have pants on right now. I almost entirely missed this last check and I turned off my alarm and then just totally spaced out. But it is now 8.50, so it's been on for over 10 hours. I feel like it's actually looking a bit greasy. I can always tell when foundation looks greasy instead of dewy because around here it just looks like almost oily. And I have dry skin. My skin doesn't get oily throughout the day, so I know it's you know, a foundation when my skin looks like this. So this one I would say probably not for oily skin, but could look totally different on your skin and if you set it with the powder and stuff, but it's not looking bad. I just wouldn't wear this as a like long wear foundation. Creasing isn't too bad. Like this is pretty good for creasing. It does look like it's rubbed off a little bit right here, probably where I was like resting my uh, hand on there. It does look pretty greasy around my pores and they're just like out to party. Here's my forehead. At least it doesn't look like cakey up there. I definitely look oily, you know. I would say it looked pretty good up until like the eight hour point really. So if I really wanted like an all day foundation, I probably wouldn't put this one on or I would try it with a different setting spray or mix it in with something. I like this one. There's just still something about it that I, I literally cannot put my finger on what it is. I've been trying to like figure it out all day. If you're going for the same effect though, like dewy skin, medium coverage just go see where life proof it's seven bucks just kind of hard to justify spending this much money on something when i have a drugstore product that does a better job holds up throughout the day and still gives you like that glowy pretty smoothing kind of effect so, like i said i will try it in other ways and i'll be updating you guys in the wrap-up video but i hope you enjoyed day three of 15 days of foundation if you did you can give this a thumbs up but i love you guys thanks for watching see you tomorrow for day four